Let us begin. I, Bishop Yaroslav of Beneshov, by the grace of God, Papal Inquisitor, have come here to Sassau in response to reports of Marian visitations and the preaching activities of one Johanka, a commoner. And I have found, indeed, that by her arbitrary word, she's been leading good people astray and encouraging their rebellion against their betters. Furthermore, Johanka has attempted to usurp the glory that belongs alone to Holy Mother Church and to appoint herself as an intermediary of the wisdom and grace of Almighty God. This does not behove any lay person, and certainly not a woman. It is therefore necessary to remedy her transgressions and to investigate the extent and the basis of her misguidance. Or, as the case may be, heresy. Henry of Scarlets has elected to appear here in Johanka's defense, and his wish has been allowed. Anyone who elects to speak here does so before God, and shall be bound by a most sacred oath to speak only the truth. I will first hear the testimony of Father Fabian, who sent me word of this matter, and who should best know what deeds are done in his parish. Father Fabian, will you tell us what Johanka has been proclaiming? Johanka claims that she has received visitations from Our Lady, the Holy Mother of God, who speaks to her in the night. It is an outrageous claim that I hold to be entirely untrue. And did Johanka come forward to ask your advice regarding these alleged apparitions? She did not. Instead, she took it upon herself to spread her supposed wisdom to the people. And prior to this, did Johanka attend church? Did you see her at your sermons, Father? I did not, Monsignor. What's more, the parish priest of Scarlet's is staying at my presbytery just now. Johanka knows him well enough, but she didn't come to see even him. I believe Johanka is deliberately avoiding the church. Instead, she meets her followers secretly in the woods and preaches to them. Either she made everything up, or the devil himself is whispering in her ear. If I may, Monsignor, the Virgin Mary really does speak to Johanka. Is that so? And on what do you found this claim? It couldn't be the devil. Johanka lives at the monastery, doesn't she? Close to the cave of St. Procopius. St. Procopius, who overpowered the devil and cast him down, did he not? The evil one would hardly dare return to the dominion of the saints to whisper in Johanka's ear. Surely that's obvious. It's true, Henry. An evil spirit, or even Lucifer himself, would have little power in the vicinity of the remains of St. Procopius. But the fact that she lives at the monastery doesn't mean that she is not misguided. What's more? She is an interloper there herself, who would not even be tolerated if it weren't for Brother Nicodemus. Yes, Father. I am aware of the impropriety of her presence in the monastery grounds. But in this I must concur with Henry. Monsignor, would you please hear the testimony of the respected burgher Pavel of Colleen? He will testify that Johanka isn't making anything up. Well, I'm very curious what this Pavel will tell us. Call Pavel of Colleen. I'm a little surprised to find a counselor of Colleen here. Especially you, who makes no secret of your animosity towards Sassau Monastery. True. Although I have only criticized the monastery in secular matters of property, which concerned a dispute with the town of Colleen and therefore my duties as a counselor. Pavel, please tell us about your recent experience. I'm all ears, Goodman. Monsignor, some years ago I hid some money in Sassau Woods. When I found myself here again recently and heard Johanka's words, I remembered that matter. 
Johanka made me aware of my inordinate love of wealth, and I resolved to donate the money in question for the common good of Sassau. For this, I needed an honest intermediary who would locate the money. In this too, Johanka helped me by putting me in touch with Henry here. By the grace of God, he found the long-lost treasure and donated it for the good of Sassau. The whole matter I regard as the intervention of the Holy Spirit. An interesting tale, Goodman Pavel. Not only that, it's also evidence of divine providence and that Johanka isn't making anything up. She wasn't possessed by an evil spirit. On the contrary, Our Lady really did speak to her. I must concur with that, Monsignor because I was subsequently also visited in a dream by the Virgin Mary. What? You too? Yes. She appeared in a blue cloak and waved to me. Do you swear that what you say is true, Pavel? I swear by Almighty God, Monsignor. Remarkable. Truly remarkable. Very well, Goodman. Thank you for your testimony. You may stand down. Even if it were true, why would Our Lady choose a simple village girl like Johanka? Monsignor, with your permission, I'd like to draw attention to the work of the great scholar Matthew of Yanov. He exalted women like Johanka. He said that God created what is weak in order to bring shame on what is strong. That's why God turns to women who love Christ and blesses them with such visions so that they can point out and rectify the vanities of men. It can't be heresy if the learned masters of universities write such tracts. What you say is remarkable. Matthew's work, which you mentioned, does speak to Johanka's benefit. But I wouldn't have expected that someone of your station has even heard of the Master of Yanov. How did you come by his work? Well, Johanka pressed me to go on a pilgrimage of repentance. I went to Ujitz, where there is a Marian church, and there, the parish priest gave me a copy of the text. That's surprising indeed. Especially that you are at all capable of reading such a work and understanding it. You're quite a fountain of unexpected skills, Henry. Thank you, Monsignor. Let's proceed, then. Is there anything else you want to add, Henry? Yes. Please call Brother Nicodemus. He has something to say about it. He's a man of learning and knows more about these things than I do. Certainly. I also wish to hear his testimony. Call him. Nicodemus, for some time you were insisting that the infirmary needed extra pairs of hands. It was only at your request that Johanka, against all accepted custom, was allowed inside the monastery walls. I've already spoken to Abbot Peter about her, but please tell me how Johanka behaved. Monsignor, I must stand behind Johanka. The girl is a treasure, selfless, charitable and good-hearted, she helped more people here than anyone else. I have never seen her do anything that would contradict the behavior of a good Christian. She never discussed questions of faith with me. She was always focused only on her work, which she carried out impeccably. And afterwards, when she began making claims of Marian apparitions? Yes. Yes. That's... Quite an extraordinary thing. The things she preached couldn't have come from any of the brothers, or from books, because she can't read. Therefore, I believe the Blessed Virgin really spoke to her. Nonsense. She made the whole thing up. Or someone did prompt her. You're very keen to defend her, brother. It makes me wonder whether she didn't get her wisdom from you. I already said she got none of it from me, and I would never lie before Almighty God. 
but it seems to me it's the inadequate education of the good parish priest here that's behind his flimsy litany. What? Am I to be criticized by someone who's m more a gardener than a scholar? Father Fabian, let Nicodemus speak. And you, Nicodemus, stick to the point, if you please. Certainly, Monsignor. Please allow this humble gardener to put the good priest right, because he evidently knows nothing of the fact that other women before Johanka had similar experiences. Blessed Hildegard of Bingen also had similar visions. And what about St. Bridget, or Elizabeth of Schernau, or Catherine of Siena? Like them, Johanka here only humbly spreads the message of Our Lady. She does not present herself as an intermediary of divine mercy. Please do not condemn Johanka, Bishop Yaroslav. In my judgment, her visions are genuine and her words sincere. Thank you, Nicodemus. Your plea is very bold. But... What you say about Hildegard and the others is true. You can rest assured, I will consider your words very carefully. Fabian, have you had trouble with heretics before, or had any suspicions of heresy here? Not much, Monsignor. Now and then, there have been traveling preachers and various charlatans here and there. Although, I did recently get reports that there were members of the Waldensian sect hiding in the province. Yes, I know of that. Henry here was helping the vicar to track them down. Unfortunately, though, they managed to flee. Thank you, Father Fabian. That's all. I'm glad to have been of service, Monsignor. I thank you also, Brother Nicodemus. You too may stand down. Call Hoshek, Bailiff of Sassau. Bailiff, has there been any suspicious activity here recently? Well... There have been cumins on the rampage in the woods and on the roads, and all sorts of bands of footpads and brigands around the province. And recently, a few troublemakers were killed near the monastery gate. Murder? Such things don't happen without cause. It's a clear indication that something is rotten in the district of Sassar. And what of Johanka, Bailiff? Has she been inciting the people here? I couldn't tell you much about her. I hardly know her. She hasn't broken any laws, and folks speak well of her, for the most part. Although it's true, things have been a bit tense here, on account of her speeches. Continue. Quite a lot of people have been going to her since she started with that preaching. Some are even convinced she's a holy woman. From what I heard, they bring her small gifts, or ask for her advice, or blessing. Sacrilege! People coming for blessings and bringing her gifts. That has all the makings of a cult. Oh, I don't know, Monsignor. Begging your pardon, but that's overstating it a bit. But it's true. They met outside town, too, and it came to a bit of a skirmish. Nothing serious happened, though. Fellas punching each other in the mouth. If you'll excuse me, Monsieur, that happens all the time. Well, that's about all I can tell you, Monsignor. Thank you, Bailiff. I will be all. And you, Henry, you've been around your Hanka more than anyone. Do people come to her for blessings? Well, they come to her, yes. But I swear she never blessed anyone. But when someone comes to her, she tries to help them, like a good Christian. Henry, I'm sure you're aware that to lie here is a mortal sin and a crime. I do. And I'm not lying. All right. Anything else? Yes, Monsignor. I'd like you to listen to Adela. She amended her life, 
and doesn't live in sin anymore, all because of Johanka. Her testimony will show that Johanka is an exemplary Christian, not the leader of some cult. All right. Call this Adela. Adela, until recently you were living in the nearby town of Ledechko, is that so? I yes And how did you make a living there? I... I served at the baths, laundering and repairing clothes, and preparing the baths. Is that all? No. Sometimes I went with the fellas and... and... Um, pleasured them... for money. But I don't do it anymore. I swear, I changed my ways on account of Johanka and Henry here, and now I lead a decent life. You're saying you simply gave up your... profession? Yes. Henry convinced me, and Johanka took me in. Very well. Thank you. And since you left Ledechko, have you sinned with anyone? No, Monsieur, I haven't. Good. May God give you the will to maintain your newfound virtue, Adela. And now, please answer one more question. You're living with a Johanka now, yes? Tell me what she says to the people who come to her. Well, they come with all sorts of problems. Some want just advice. Some want her maybe to bless them or talk to Our Lady for them. They believe she's a holy woman. So, Johanka accepts gifts from these people and then gives them her blessing? No, it's not like that. Johanka doesn't bless anyone. And she doesn't want any gifts from anyone either. Folk just bring them. The things they bring, she gives them out to the sick and wounded. She doesn't keep anything, I swear. You swear? Yes. I swear to it all, Monseigneur. I'd never lie to you. All right. You may go. Please hear also the testimony of Guta, wife of the tailor, Ambrose. She can also bear witness to Johanka's good deeds. All right. I promised I'd hear all the witnesses you brought. Call her. Guta, you witnessed Johanka's first sermon. What did she speak of? About how we should be virtuous and not sinful. And then you went to see Johanka, didn't you? I did, Monseigneur. I, I wanted to ask her for help, and she did. I was praying for my husband for a long time and begging God to help him. And I believe my prayers were answered, and he sent Johanka to us. And there were others who came to her seeking help? Yes, Monseigneur. There were. And that shrine, and the gifts. People brought them to Johanka so she'd help them? I couldn't tell you. But she helped me, without any of that. Didn't you bring her any gifts? Well, yes, but that was after. Just some old cloth for bandages and bed covers so she could help others like she helped me. Every evening, I pray for Johanka and thank the Blessed Virgin for sending her to us. I see. Thank you. You may go. Very well. Now, I wish to question Katra, the swordsmith's wife. Bring her here. Katra, you are a respected townswoman who has a good overview of what goes on in Sassau. As you told me earlier, will you tell me now what you know of Johanka and her deeds? Yes, I'll tell you everything, Monsignor. Johanka has been putting ideas into people's heads and causing chaos. What right has she to preach to us? A simple girl like that. As if we were bad people here. 
And she herself is a sinner, and an adulterer, a loose woman she is, who goes with anyone, and even fornicated with a custodian, Sir Sebastian. That's nothing but slander. Quiet, Henry. I will deal with this matter in a moment. All right, Katra. That will be all. I have also heard rumors of Johanka's immorality that cannot be ignored. Bring here the Sassar custodian, Sir Sebastian von Berg. Sir Sebastian, my apologies for raising the matter, but doubts have been cast on your virtue. I have been told that you have shared your bed with your hunker. Is it true? Monsignor, with respect, this is surely some mistake. Johanka is not a bad girl, and by no means a heretic. Noted. Now please answer my question. Did you share your bed with Johanka or not? Ah... Uh, yes... But she's not... Silence! So... Johanka not only incites rebellion against the nobles, but also seduces them into sin and immorality. Monsignor, I've known Johanka a long time, and she's a virtuous girl and a good Christian. She just needed support. It wasn't a bodily desire, but one of the soul. Consider what she went through. Her whole family slaughtered, and everyone here turned their backs on her, but for Sir Sebastian. Anyone can make a mistake, can't they? And she's sorry for her mistake. Monsignor, let's put a stop to this. It's undignified for us both, and for Johanka. She's no heretic, just a confused young girl to whom fate has been less than kind. Her confusion will pass. All it needs is for someone to explain to her the error of her ways. There's no necessity for extreme measures. Sir Sebastian, be so kind as to leave the judgment of Johanka's transgressions to me. You may go. Henry? You proved yourself a good servant of the church when you told me of your disturbing findings concerning the situation hereabouts. You've been very keen to appear here in Johanka's defense. You've said a lot about her, but please, tell me why you've been helping her all this time. Monsignor, she's my friend. After the terrible things that happened in Scalis, neither of us has many dear ones left. It seemed only right to me to help her. You seem like a compassionate man. It certainly says something about your hunker, that someone like you stands up for her. That will be all, Henry. Monsignor, please permit me to say one more thing. I heard some wise words at a sermon in Scalis, and I think I should share them here. It's our Christian duty to fight against sin, but we must love the sinner. So I beg you, Monsignor, be lenient to Johanka. You're right, Henry. Those are wise words. Nothing remains but to question Johanka herself. Johanka of Scarlets, you've heard the accusations brought against you, and we have also heard several testimonies. I already questioned you earlier, and it has also come to my attention that Henry here bribed a guard to allow him to see you in your cell, which I expressly forbade. Johanka, do you wish to revise the answers you gave earlier? Or do you stand by what you said? 
I stand by everything I told you. So be it. I expressly forbade you to continue preaching, and you promised not to do so. You defied my instruction and broke your promise. Why? Forgive me, Monsignor. But I could do nothing else. Our Lady asked me to do it, and I couldn't refuse her. She did visit me. But now I admit that I might have been wrong about some things. I don't understand these learned matters, and I was too hasty in speaking to the people. I regret that I didn't go first to Father Fabian and tell him about everything. I... I want to apologize here, before the Blessed Virgin. If I misunderstood something, and said untruths or brought shame on the church. I didn't intend to do anything like that. I ask Our Lady's forgiveness, and I will accept any punishment that you impose on me. I'm pleased that you've seen the error of your ways and confessed to your mistakes. These proceedings are closed. You may leave. Your hunker will now hear my verdict. Your hunker, are you aware you're facing very grave accusations? Yes, Monsignor. I am. You stand accused of preaching from ignorance and leading the people away from the protective embrace of Holy Mother Church. If you do not recant, you will suffer grave consequences. Pride and ignorance clouded her reason. Child, you distress me greatly to have to pronounce a verdict of condemnation. Speak then. Do you recant your sermons and swear never again to preach to the people? And are you prepared to repent? As God is my witness, I did all this with good intentions. And I sincerely repent of my sins of conceit. I confess that I was led by my pride to believe the Virgin Mary chose me to put the world to rights. And I set myself above the learned prelates of the church and the divine right of nobility. I repent my sins of pride and ask forgiveness. I will do as you command, Father. Johanka has confessed her guilt. From this day forward, she'll be a good and humble Christian again. She shall no longer indulge in philosophizing and shall in her penitence robe Go every day to pray at the Church of St. Martin. Therefore, I ask you to welcome Johanka back into your midst and hold no grudge against her. If the Virgin Mary should happen to visit you again, tell Father Fabian he will send for me. All right? Yes, Monsignor. Very good.
Johanka was cleared of all charges of heresy. And the Inquisitor, his job done and his verdict pronounced, left Sassau for good. Matthias recovered from his illness, and he and Johanka finally met again. It was a happy sight to see them both alive and well after their trials. Who knows what awaits them now? Or all of us, for that matter.